perhaps that will be if you would. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. 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 Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this morning? Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this morning? Seeing none, that portion was immediately closed. Number four, discussion from 532 and 533 County Road East. So that, um, Last meeting uh, in Rush Lake there, we had uh, a gentleman come in with the uh, drainage issues there. Um, Chuck had land and water look into that. Um, basically what they came down to the same as we had, there's really no solution out there for that. Um, I think the solution we had was to, um, to take that water in that low land there and we're close to having the property the owner. For us again. Uh no, it's, well, where that's where that low line right, area yeah, yeah, yeah is right in here, that low line area. We thought that water would get in there. Um the landowner changed his mind, doesn't want anything to do with that. So this is gonna be one of those areas that you know to to dig the dip the ditches deeper um, and try to maintain a four to one or three to one slope is, is virtually impossible. Um, to store that water on his side, I don't think he's gonna be real happy with that. We're gonna have very steep vertical slopes on that, very dangerous. Um, um, I think this is gonna be one of those we're gonna have to, and uh, at some point this is gonna either have to be uh, addressed in a, a a reconstruction project or you know, I don't think we want to put in a lift station. Um, there's just no good solution here for this area here. Um, without heavy excavation and try to move this water either way, there's just there's not a good spot to go with this. Um, so I think land and water kind of summed it up. I mean, yeah, they, uh, we looked into it. First thing is, is there a a history of a water course going through that property. They could not find that. Uh, so obviously that little ditch they had in there that we've seen uh, was probably man-made at one point. And of course, in the home, they filled it in. They built the house right where the ditch used to go. So basically what you had now is a dead spot. Uh, there's no viable way to leave that other than tile system perhaps like farmers would do uh, but that's certainly something new that the highway department has to venture into other than that there's there's just no way to do it you know it's just uh if it was a water course issue that would fall back onto the town government uh being a county road our responsibility is the ditches right away so um, the only viable option would be to tile perhaps, but that gets a little complicated because you're going to have to install some kind of an inlet if we were to pursue that, that can be clean because it's obviously going to plug up with all kinds of stuff. So that's kind of where they are, where we are. You know, I, I don't know. If that's something we want to look at down the road. Obviously, you're running out of time this year, I believe, but. Uh, Isn't there a spring right there? Uh, on the road from there or right near there? Oh, that's so, about a thousand feet away, right? Is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, now, also with tiling, you got to have an outlet somewhere. So, you know, that, that's a possible solution, but not necessarily the most uh, economical. That kind of thing, but in the daylight, that's what it's going to be. Is I mean, you have to have a low enough area to drain to, to drain it to, and on the county system, there's not. So it would have to be private property, whether a drainage easement, um, like that. So 
that spring has been there forever. Yeah, if there is one. I'm not familiar. Are you, Tom, with that There's area? Not, ever since I was a kid coming down Fort Street from the old man's farm, there was always uh, water in that spring there. He's on about tea over my rush lake. Yeah, this is another one, day. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. I know where by put town is all over there. Yep. Now, you said that the gentleman heard decided he didn't want to be part of anything. Was there a plan that was going to be part of that was going to work? Or? Uh, he was entertaining the possibility of running that through his property, just letting it was low land to go through there. Um, and then the last minute said he wanted nothing to do with that. So I don't know, kind of got a feeling there was a little more behind the scenes with it that changed his mind, but he was just, part of that group that was here. I'm not, well, the, the, the one that was here was the farm owner. Um, this, the other one was this gentleman from back here. That builds this property that we originally talked to that makes only sense to come through here. But like I said, at last minute, he changed his mind and wanted anything to do with You'd have to coming on his property. Well, uh, you get into all kinds of issues uh, without an easement. The county couldn't do it. There's private property. I had to bid it out. There is some cost sharing involved there. Uh, but apparently, you said no to that. So. I thought there was a thing in the county where you could never put no more water over on someone else's property than what already was. And all of a sudden, you have new homes there. That's correct. And now and that comes with a building permit from our erosion control right. ordinance. Uh, I'm where did that come from? Something <laughs> well, it does come back on the county. Then. Well, uh, uh, the department uh, of the county. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. The county. Great. Yeah. Yeah, there was so. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing too is though that I mean, we have seen greater rainfalls from the past two or the last twenty years. I mean, we, you know, to get a one inch or a two inch or a three inch rainfall is not out of the norm anymore. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing more, you know, rainfall, and obviously uh, in this area, obviously the effects is uh, area right here significant. So. So this is one, I mean, it's not going to be a, a real simple fix. We can go out there and just, hey, this, we can do this, and it's going to resolve this issue. This is going to be a bigger, you know, I think uh, even if we would do some engineering on this one, I think we're going to get the same results um, with that. But I would say if, if you were to contemplate a grain tile, which would have to be a rather large, uh, you'd have to have, Probably an engineer come in, right? Hire him to see uh, if you can actually implement that and make it work. They did that when they did that little stretch over there um, by, well, far, um, Farmstead now, uh, by that park with the county homes. That used to be nothing but uh, the drains. They put yep. it all along there and now they mow right over it, park right along there and everything. That was just a big tile. You see the tile there? Yep. Yeah, well, tiling works on it. And like I said, it's I'm just an outfall where you right can go on the outfall. It. You just got to have yeah. that area that's low enough to take it, and it's got to go. Mm -hmm. So that that's going to be the only obstacle here is to try to find that low point. And like I said, I, on the county system, you don't have that low point on there. It's going to be on private property. So whether yeah, it's got drainage out easements or public property, right. and basically you'd want to run it down a ditch or something into a creek. And, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, then Amos, I will look at it and see whether it's. I was just going to suggest, yeah. Another neighbor or somebody? I mean, the only thing, I mean, we could try to go back to this, uh, the other neighbor here, um, you know, that we originally talked to, but like I said, I think, well, if you already did one. Yeah, I, I, I think there's, like I said, I think there's a little more behind that, yeah, so. Is it I, I, false again? Your name is I just named. Yeah. You might be able to tell them whether there's something that can be done or not. Does that all the time? He's one Tyler. There's several in the county. Uh, I would say uh, tiling would be maybe the most costly thing. If you get into easements and all that kind of stuff with the private property on that, you get a little expensive. Stuff. But I can see where this farmer is upset. I know if we want to. Oh, we got a horse farm. We got water in our barn. You can see my wife get upset. 
So, but I can see where he's up at now. He's yeah. getting all of that there. So it's going right into his barn at that. We also got barnyard. We got manure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, who's going to own all that manure? Who is, who's fault is that? Then? Yeah, there, I mean, um, tiling might be a viable option as long as you can run it into a swale, a grass swale or something to filter the water a little bit. But that's kind of where you are. I, I totally agree something needs to be done. Uh, um, I guess we need to come up with the most cost-effective decision when we do it. I wonder if that guy would be interested in it. He said, well, we'll go ahead and we will put tiling in if you will let us in on your property and this drain back in there. Sure. And then, I mean, we can definitely try to reach out to them at the end of it. You know, that's a good idea, Tom. Instead of tiling down the ditch, tile through their private property. Yeah, that way you could still mow over it and everything. And then it goes back into a filtered wetland and we're good to go. Yeah, we can definitely try to reach out to him and see if something's changed. Yeah. Definitely. Because he does have the outlet, right? Yeah. Good idea. All right. Um, the jurisdictional transfer for uh, TN Pioneer, um, we had we had, the last meeting, we approved that. Um, there was a discrepancy with uh, linear footage, um, and it was to be go to county board this, this week. Um, but we pulled it back. We're going to pull that back. Um, we did make the uh, corporation council did make the necessary edits. So the only edits there was was the linear footage on County Road T was the only one on there. Um, so it's eight thousand and twenty six linear feet. Is uh, so line eleven and twenty four. Have been edited to get that 8,026 feet. Um, and then the only other lines 23 and 29, just uh, instead of East Grandview Road, uh, we're changing that to Pioneer Road. Um, GIS wasn't able to, it's, on our GIS, it's not labeled East Grandview Road. It's only on Whistler, the state site, that it's East Grandview Road. So the discrepancy. Of taking it from where to where, so uh, so we'll make those adjustments and that'll come back um, to. So basically, what today is we're just discussing. So I'll bring this back next meeting uh, for committee approval with the adjustments, uh, the correct edits on there, and then we'll go back to uh, county board the following. So there's no time frame with uh, uh, with this project, so it's not a big deal. But can we just get back? Make an amendment at the meeting. Yeah. I think they recommended not to. Okay. So just because there was no time restraints that a sunset a sunset date that we had to meet, um, we just pulled it. We'll just go back and there was question town town yeah area yeah area so area. yep so, yeah so okay. it kind of went you know from the town GIS and so there was a, a lot of questions there so we'll just we'll make the necessary edits in there. And, do they measure that on the center line or? Yes. Yeah. So the thing is, is that Whistler, I mean, all your uh, funding comes from the Whistler road ratings, um, certified mileage. So where our GIS did not have this brand new road officially mapped on there, but Whistler did. So that's where the discrepancy where measurements, you know, get taken from. And um, so at least this way, the, uh, Town of Clayton, when they make their resolution, um, and ours, you know, both be the same and have all the correct data on there. So he's referring to road age. Right. Yeah. Thanks for being road age. still on the agenda. So you want to make a motion to have a hold or whatever? Okay. Otherwise, we'd have to change all the numbering and everything else. So people should. Thank you. <clears throat> Number six, the session would be good for the cancel trucks. So um, those three freight liners we had, um, 
we put out for bid um, and then they canceled them. So we did rebid those. So Freightliner was a little bitter and they canceled. Correct. So what happened with Freightliner was is that the, the chassis and model they were building that they quoted us on, they are going to change production line to this new uh, new model. So basically they couldn't provide that old model that we wanted. So basically they just canceled the order, um, but they did not give us that new model or they just, it just was canceled. So we went to rebid this. Um, so obviously uh, Peterbilt International and Western Star were the only three bids we received. Um, quality truck with Western Star um, was the low bid. So I think last year, Gloria, remember what they like forty two thousand. I think that last bid was about forty two thousand. So um, you know they're up about fifteen sixteen thousand from uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they can furnish the trucks. Yeah. So the delivery is uh, first and second quarter of twenty four. So this is where you're coming down to where I mean to get the trucks. Uh, you know, next year, uh, getting them in 24. So this sounds like this is the trend uh, we're looking at now is I mean, if you're purchasing the trucks, you're not going to get them for, uh, you know, until following year after. So and we have a good luck with Western Star. Yeah, yeah, knock on wood. Um, so the way it looks right now is that that's the route we're going to go. I mean, when you start looking at Peterbilt for the extra money, um, you know, when you look at if you buy four trucks and one truck, you're with the added cost, you can get by an extra truck with the Western Star. So I think the majority of our fleet now is that Western Star. So it makes perfect sense to stay kind of, you know, stay with that for our fleet. So, um, so just kind of let you know that's kind of where we're going to, we're just waiting now to, uh, Jill's going to run a report for me. Just I want to see how many vehicles or how many trucks um, for depreciation fall off of the depreciation. Um, so I should add that today, and then we'll put this order in right away. So this quality from the East and Oshkosh, or the, the South Carolina? Yeah, they're right up the road here. They do have a shop in Appleton, Green Bay. So, so yeah, yeah, so for us, is here. we're right maybe a mile and a half down the road. So if we do have any issues, we're real close. And um, they've been great to work with uh, any issues we've had with vehicles. So a couple of questions. Sure. Yeah. Okay, but like this is already okay to pass to do, to do this, right? And then for the first order that you can pass. Right? right. How much was that approved for? Um I think the trucks were like um total they were like hundred and forty thousand. And I think we had like I remember right, was it like 800,000 somewhere in that ballpark? So we were going to get like, you know, and that was including the winter equipment added on. So the 100, this price here is just the chassis. So what we'll do is we'll purchase the trucks and then next year we'll go, because we won't get any prices for winter equipment um, just because of the market. Just, you know, they'll give us a, a price for quote for estimating purposes, but we'll just we'll put these back out for quote for winter equipment next year. So, so since you, we're not you have to put a brand new winter equipment on a brand new truck. Unfortunately, I mean by the time we get rid of them, they are there are the you know, salters and wings and have seen their their time. Um, so yeah. The other question I get was uh, now that we got this that canceled, the time maybe to think of with the shortage of the trucks that we've had fire and full of engines and that it was maybe it's smart to try to get more trucks so we cover this so that you don't come out to the 24 and say, okay, now we need three more already. Right. At least we have them come in and ordered and the price is kind of close to fixed. Well, and that's something definitely we got to look at. I mean, one thing is to, you know, you know to have all your vehicles brand new with the depreciation. Um, it's a tough one to have. You want to kind of have some new, you want to have some middle of the road, you want to have some at that back end. 
um, you know, to have a whole brand new fleet. Um, at the back end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's kind of where, you know, we're, where we're at. We're shifted that. We got to shift back that other way. But, to, you know, to go out and buy, you know, just say, hey, we're going to buy 20 trucks. Um, you know, I mean, 20. But oh, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. another yep. one or two. Yep. Because, you know, that's some pretty bad luck. They're not going to be cheap to fix them, no matter what happens. So, preparing, maybe you won't be sure, taking ahead. Again, right. I always, you know, everything that I've been looking about a lot of times, we don't really talk a lot about maintenance. We just worry about what happens today and, and patch this and that. And then all of a sudden, when we came into it, there's a lot of stuff now we got to replace. Major stuff. So, I'm always thinking that, yeah, sure, being in the car, there's all the extra stuff that we do. We, we kind of forget, and then later it comes up. I said, We told you about that. We talked about it. But I was thinking if you could get a one or two or somehow if it falls on one, it, it, it might protect it. Sure. I know you're looking for another one, but it might be an extra for the future help, right? So we don't have Yeah, to I think what what we'll do is I mean we'll, like, these these prices, uh, you know, we just kind of got in. Um, so when we look at what we had, we had to juggle some prices. We had to juggle because we couldn't get some trucks and um, so whether we you know, buy three or four out of this. Um, we'll just we'll have to see what we had in, in that budget and where we're at, and that'll get, determine where we're going to go for, for that. So, but are these guaranteed prices on this one? The rest I see pricing and every subject to changes, but it's very number only. But I see nothing that's in there. This the same thing with Freightliner when they came back with those three. Uh, you know, I, I think they're you know the first surcharge was like forty eight hundred, then it was like fifty six hundred or fifty eight hundred. Um, I, I I hope that is, but I don't think there's anything saying that it, it won't change. But if we gave something down, you know, that help. As of right now, no, but we can look into that and see. Um, we kind of by looking at this too. I mean, this price. I mean. My thought is, is we probably should bump it up a little bit to cover in case there is, um, you know, so my thought was, is, you know, we put that at 170,000, um, you know, last year it was around 15,000. So we're going to be right in that ballpark again, um, just to cover any of those costs that do come up. Hopefully we don't see any of that, but kind of got a feeling that where we're at though I can see how we're not going to see any surcharges or I can see where you're saying that but then if this comes out and all of a sudden uh, Pack City says hey we're going to be 160 right. a little bit yep yeah you're right. referring to a, a budget process right. not a bidding process well right yeah. so I mean all we could do is is go off of what they provide us at that point but like I said from uh, I mean on our end we're they canceled, so we do have that money in there. So do we try to, you know, I'd rather put a little buffer in there rather than push that right to the max and say, hey, let's get an extra truck out of here. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're coming back and asking for the surcharges, you know. Um, I said I would wish you had an answer what they would be or if there will be. In this economy, you know. Yeah, it's the same thing they're telling us. Concrete's going up 30 to 40 bucks a yard next year. I don't, that's what they're saying. The first department did that. I think so, we're suggesting some yeah. effects like the footprint. Yeah. It's being proactive instead of being reactive. Number seven, discussion of winter maintenance and home parking lots. So, in the past, obviously, the highway department has uh, its no removal on park on the parking lots. Um, I know Mark Mike Elder contacted me uh, a while back. Here he was having staffing issues, uh, shoveling snow on the sidewalks, um, and then with our shortage of employees too. So he did put out a bid um, for this to go to, for privately being done. Um, I think where we couldn't get and we can't get end motors, we were able to get three, um, and the prices are through the roof. Um, so I think Mike did get uh, a couple quotes that came in, um, and I think 
for us as far as being short staffed um, equipment wise. Um, I think it's better for our uh, trucks to be on the road um, than in the parking lots. Um, so he was going to award that to the contractor um, uh, to do that for this year. Um, hopefully next year, uh, you know, we don't have to, we're in a different situation. Um, so as of right now, that's what it looks like is that um, I have, don't know who much about who the contractor or anything with the bids or whatever. Um, but I know the, um, there was only one contractor that would do the snow removal on the sidewalks. Um, and that's what Mike needed help with on his end. Um, so as of right now, it looks like that's the route that it's going to go. Um, you know, I wish, wish we weren't in the spot we're at being short staffed. Um, and, you know, but I think it's better option. I think at least we're going to have those, uh, you know, keep the uh, trucks on the freeways and our county roads and our townships. Um, Are you referring to uh, just sidewalks or parking lots and sidewalks? So parking lots and sidewalks. Okay. So courthouse, so home services. Yes. Be, the cab. Uh, basically farmed out to private contracts. Yeah. Right. I think we might have a problem with that the way it's written, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a motion was made and seconded to the board and passed that uh, the highway takes care of all county owned parking lots. Okay. Uh, to my I, thought, I think so too. As right. a matter of policy. Right, right. As a matter of policy. So, okay. in other words, as of right now, one of those things changed. Um, to me, the two guys would have to be in charge of it. Uh, it can't be farmed out until the board. Of course, if you don't have the help, what are they going to do? But uh, the way that it's stated in policy to the board and that does, they have to take care of them. So yes. You're saying we need a resolution I to think a amend. resolution, but uh, it's, it's a discussion in here, so we can't do it here. Yeah, that's what we thought. Well, you should check on it to make sure that that's what it is. Right. But I'm almost positive a few years ago. Thank you, are. My memory is telling me the same thing. Because a few years ago, we were bidding out and all this and that, and here we had our own. Highway department that would be the abuse. It wasn't just the winter, maybe it was all the parking lot. Right. Um, okay, I could check the back with my. I think the main big discussion come up because of the, of, you know, stuff that we knew recently that happened. So that's what it's not all the decision on that one because we, you know, I don't talk about it here. I better not talk about it. I guess we can. Yeah. We, did, we don't own all that property. That was needed to half us and half the other ones. So it isn't just going to be with counties. Counties don't actually own it half and half. But as I said, but the main discussion always was about the big county and our county was uh, built in the big county. And that's why they always rejected a lot of things because they live in the big county. So, anyways, that was one of the things that I think the parks was also too, why we weren't doing the parks instead of having it to know. So, we got the amendment. Because the parks were bidded out. And they were supposed to be by the parks were so, bidded out? Or, yeah, and they get some gifts, private people doing that. They, they, they do this one. They do their own. Yeah, they do their own. Yeah, they do their own. Yeah, they do their own. They bought a field order. Somebody, I heard from them. Hiring out cutting off lawns because they couldn't do it. Well, that could be lawns. Oh, yeah. so, so, you're saying we currently do not take care of the university system up there? That's why I didn't want to bring no. it up here, but no, it's not no. It's not all Winnebago County. Okay, it's, it's, I understand. It's, it's, so, I don't know how you want to do that. Uh, well, I can check with Mike Elder, was kind of. Well, I brought it up to my girls and he did want to go. Well, don't have to help. They don't have to help with the two ball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just stating okay. according to board so we don't have somebody come up and say, hey, how come they're doing that? Right. Okay. I will uh, check into that. Plus, he, left, he lost one of the best couple of years he ever had. There was a lady. Yeah. Yeah. I think he had to. Yeah. 
in the morning to the crews. Um, they, the supervisors have to go out and meet with each individual crew uh, to, to issue orders. Um, so what, what this is, is actually it's a, a TV monitor and then we can post um, the employee's name, uh, what they're doing that day, uh, a project number, uh, the piece of equipment they're in. Um, all this information then will be loaded onto this monitor and it will be out in the lunchroom. So when crews come in in the morning, um, they can see exactly what they're doing for the day. Their name will be up there, what truck or piece of equipment they're going to be in, um, the job number that gets charged to, uh, everything will be on that. So in the morning, um, instead of if the uh, crew member, now they can come out there, most of the crews know who to go meet their foreman, what they're going to be doing that day. So help out, the big thing is, is the, the, like communication too. I mean, any we can post anything, weather updates, um, anything we want for the crews. If, uh, you know, any message we want to put through, we can put on this and flip the screens, um, you know, so it's, uh, will help improve getting the crews going in the morning. So instead of meeting with individually every single one and telling the same thing, um, they know right away they can go meet with their foreman. We're hoping to expedite that whole process with this. Do they get paper orders right now? Yes. And this probably going to eliminate that? Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. So what, what our plan is, is that, like I said, instead of meeting individually with 50 different you know, crews that, you know, if there's 20 guys that are hauling asphalt uh, for a paving project. All they have to do is look on there. They're hauling asphalt out of Larson Quarry for the T project. They know what truck they're in. Uh, they they can just go. Instead of a supervisor meeting with them, now they can just have meet with their foreman. The foreman can give them, hey, you know, what, you know, where they're loading, where they're just giving that rundown. So instead of, you know, now they can spend more time with an individual foreman to give the detailed instructions and uh, for the day, rather than, like I said, each individual where you're going to be. So they don't have that many things on an order, like uh, or on, on each order. Like if, like my old job, if, you know, I'd have one or two pages, and that would tell me, you know, I couldn't look at a screen in the morning and know all the stuff I had to do. There's, that would have been impossible for me to come back. Right. So these guys, they just go to one job and they're there all day or maybe- Pretty much, yeah. Jobs. So they'll be assigned to a foreman. So like I said, if they're hauling asphalt, they're gonna be on a paving crew. Um, it'll have, you, they'll know who the foreman, paving foreman is, um, but they're gonna know what piece of equipment they're gonna be in. So they can do their pre-trip trip inspections on their trucks um, and have one meeting with one foreman if they're hauling, you know, if they're on the paver, running the street, uh, running roller or hauling asphalt, that they get that assignment right there. So they'll be there hauling asphalt all day. Mm -hmm. So they just get, hey, this is the truck I'm going to be in and this is where I have to haul from and this is the time that I need to be here. And Easy enough. Yeah. And we're, whether it's a, a job number. And one thing is too, is, you know, uh, could take a snap of a phone of, mm -hmm. with it, um, you know, but they're going to be on that every day, you know, whatever the day is, the full day, unless something comes up, if it rains or something, we have to break down, then it, it's a whole different process. But uh, to get everybody going in the morning right away, it, it'll be a lot easier to get going. And like I said, it's the simple 
you know, if a guy's running roads on the state, um, they know, hey, that's what I'm doing today. Uh, they can just look at it and then they can head out and start getting that. Uh, Who's making of, those assignments? What so, individual is making that assignment? So what they do is, so the two road superintendents and uh, the managers, so they meet uh, the day before uh, and set up a schedule. So they set up a week-long schedule and then they set up daily. So they meet uh, typically in the afternoon um, for the following day for work. Um, and then the two managers will give out uh, assignments each day. So they'll get the crews going and they're running during the day. So run the daily operations with the crews. If they have any questions, that's who they go to. So we have work orders. So every job we have is a work order. So depending if we're working in the township, the state, there's a work order. Everything goes through that work order. So it tells all the specifics of that job is on that work order. And that work order goes to the foreman. So that foreman has that work order uh, you know, signing or what we're the uh, amount of asphalt we're laying or ditching or everything is on that work order. And the superintendents oversee that work. Correct. So the superintendent, the two road superintendents are the ones that make all the work orders. So as they get the work in, they produce a work order that goes in a file and they have a filing system, whether it's ditching, asphalt, uh, chip sealing, however, they, their filing system. Um, so at any time, so if they're paving during the day and they get rained out, um, they can come in and they can grab something out of that to fill the day, the rest of the day with the employees. Um, so everything's on a work order and that's how we track everything. So day-to-day -day operations, everything's through a work order. But how did this come about or what the story behind it? The, the work orders? What, so this idea of this where? Um, Sheboygan County, a lot of the counties are going through. It's improved uh, communication, it's improved uh, efficiency, getting the crews going in the morning. Um, instead of having 50 guys stand around while I'm talking to an individual because you know, you know, all four is this in the morning, like today, you know, I'll talk about the Packers and it kind of drags on this way yeah. and kind of yeah. get them moving. Well, that was the board was always a big deal trying to get them on the road. Yeah, I mean, there's there's days, but the thing was, is that's where that you know, we kind of did it was a piece of paper like this, wrote down everything, and the foreman would go out and gather his crew. Um, so that's what we're trying to. Get away from is is that the guys know they come in, in the morning they know what they're going to be doing that day then the foreman comes in they grab those that crew and then they can go does they some of the foreman's met that they know about this and are they excited about it or how they feel it um we've tried to roll out um uh a couple things with the foreman and there was there was a little bit of pushback but for the most part i think i, I have some if you want to take just a look at these are some of the examples of what what we could put on there. It's, you know, um, so, but other counties have found it is very effective. Is there a good day in conversation with the rural events? That's what I was thinking. Like, yeah. when you talk to you know, people right away in the morning and see if it was a bad day yesterday or. Yep, but we're still going to do that. We still have, we're still going to, the, the uh, managers before, like, they're still going to have that communication. But at the end of the day, um, the two managers are going to talk to the foreman every day, plan out, hey, what went, what worked today? What did you finish up? Do we need to go back tomorrow or for the following day? So we kind of, what we did is we came, kind of came up with a whole line as kind of how to streamline the communication between the superintendents and the foreman. Um, and that's kind of what we've, we're trying to, we, we just presented that to the foreman and uh, we had a little bit of pushback and we're still trying to we wanted to go live with it implement it and uh, it's kind of hanging right now so so this price is it uh is it the computer and the monitor or yep so what the, the this my all it is is a little box it's a little computer um and then it gets hooked into our system so whether um how many uh computers we tie into they're going to be the ones that are in charge of entering the data in there. So every day this will be entered in for the following day. So 
this price includes running the so so this is for the year and then next year there will be there will be the licensing fees and uh but the m the uh the monitor or the uh, mp1 player um or the p1 player I should say that's a one-time fee i think it's like seven hundred and some dollars seven seven so and then like i said then each year you have licensing with it to run it. that's a good question so yeah yep. does he have money in the budget for school suits to do girls in school <laughs> <laughs> I think that you're you're on to something here, but but I just here again uh like we talked about I'm getting I'm afraid that we're gonna lose that communication between the health and that. I know you're you're saying no, but um this has been something the employees have told us that they wish they would have this information. So are they saying that so they don't have to talk to their supervisors no, of that no, or no, just so they know. Um a lot of them said, you know, like um, you know, during the winter. To prepare for the next day, um, you know, hey, should I wear 10 layers? And then you come in in the morning and then you're in the shop, uh, you know, uh, working in the shop or something like that, that it will help them prepare. So at least in the morning, I mean, they'll, you know, depending on when we get that information out, um, you know, they'll know what they're doing ahead of time. So that day, they can start planning right away when they get here in the morning. They're going to know what their, what their job is that day. So like I said, Sheboygan County is um, that I talk to a lot with this. Um, they can't say enough. And this is the exact system that they're using. Um, Brown County uses a little bit of different system. Um, same thing. They found uh, great success with it. It's helped out a lot. Um, How long have they had? Uh, they're going on, I believe, three, four years now. So I moved to approve number eight. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Sir. Discussion. Oh, why are we? No. no. Your rule. So this was. Uh, So this was has kind of been in the mix for quite a while. Um, right away was purchased uh, back when John Hayes was here. Um, you remember back when I presented this to the county board, there was uh, a steep hill, bad vision for this. Um, if you look at the the profile on the sheet at the bottom, you can see that red line. That's uh, that's what the roadway is proposed at. But if you look at that at the top where it says original ground, that's what that hill looks like. So is that's that how. Really spent though? Nope. So that that's how in in it, what you do, Dave. If you look straight up like this, if you carry that's where the hill is. So this kind of carries straight up like this. So that hill is right here. Um, one of the obstacles is, is there's a cemetery uh, there. Obviously, you know, we got to stay far away from that. Um, but one thing to look at is, is a 25 mile an hour curve, okay? So this is a 20, 25 mile an hour curve. The faster that you go, 35 mile an hour, 45 mile, the, the, it gets bigger. Okay, so more right away. So if you look at on this, that dotted line where it says existing right away, up on the top there, right below your pen there, Chuck. Okay, I see it. Yep, so that's existing right away. So if you go down to that curve and see where that is, is in the road on that curve in there. So one of the things right now is, is that to put a 25 mile an hour curve in here, um, we don't have enough right away. So if we want to put a 35 mile an hour or 45 mile an hour, this is going to get, radius will get larger and we're going to need more right away. So as of right now, 
25 mile an hour curves is the uh, slowest we can get in there, but we're going to need more right away in there. So with this one, uh, you know, the back side of this is you start getting into site stopping distances, and that's what we're that's the big thing what we're looking at is, is to cut that curve down for the site stopping distances. Um, and you can see it's everything's proportional with speed on that chart. So I guess what it comes down to it is, is that this was proposed for next year for construction. Um, but obviously we need more right away in here. And it's obviously we're not going to be able to get this right away uh, acquired in time to, to, to do anything with this. So I guess what we're looking at is, is whether we move forward with trying to acquire more right away to accommodate the 25 mile an hour curve. Um, or we obviously leave it the way it is until we get to that point. I mean, I guess what it comes down to it is, is right as of right now, we don't have enough right away. Do we want to purchase more right away in order to accommodate this? Um, I'm like, Mr. Chair, Tom, are you very familiar with this intersection? What's your thought? I think it needs to be done. There is a heck of a fill in that there. It should be done. But I was just wondering, how far away are you going to be from that cemetery? Where's the cemetery? Quit ways. The further we can stay away, the better. Is what Where is um, we're doing this. Um, you can so, see all those little headstones right here. Oh, okay. right it's there. A cross it's that's on the south. Yep. Okay. yep. Yeah. So that's the big. I mean, we we're we're we have the same issue up on County Road P is under design right now. There's a cemetery up there, and it's the same thing. There is that you can only go so close to that cemetery, and that's what sets your boundaries with everything. And that's kind of with with this with this concept here is to stay away and then actually have some decent sloping, uh, you know, from that. Right now, you go out there; they're real steep. Uh, embankment, um, you know, this will let us at least get a nice gradual grade in there. Um, but so you yeah. want to purchase right away on the in the inside side of that side. curve, correct? Yeah. So it wouldn't affect the second set. No, no, and that's kind of where we're looking we're, at more on that farm field out there, right? Out right. There yep, right on that inside curve there. Yep. And it's not going to be a lot. It's just, you know, but it's we need the we need the additional right away. So this is something that, you know, we, we go that route, we can acquire that the necessary right away. Um, and then once we have that, obviously, to get into design, and this could be something, I mean, we could have on the shelf and be shelf ready to go. Um, well, but like I said, looking at another, how many feet do you have footage? No, there's really, we didn't, we didn't get that far into it. To, it looks like... Uh, Probably looking at maybe another what 50, 60 feet to each one. Yeah, I mean you're gonna you're gonna want some additional for clear zone. Yeah, it's you're gonna need some additional right away in there for clear zone. It's not gonna be uh, you know, it's not gonna be acres about that. So it's gonna be minimal, but it's still gonna have to, you know, be surveyed out and go through the, you know. Well, based on what you said, I think you ought to buy it right away and get it done. ASAP. Yep. My question is back on the cemetery, and you know it's on the opposite side, but you can put like a guard up along the front there. So when they did do the turn, then we did really didn't get in that far with this. Basically, what just tried to get a, cur a curve, what would fit in there, right? It's so, kind of what this is. So we're really not even into that part, but. So they know you plan on having a 25 mile an hour curve, but I know the guys are out there. They aren't going to go sure. 25 mile an hour unless they have to. Have to. I can just see them going out. Right. I don't go 25 by your house. There you go. <laughs> see? I mean, this might be one of them too, where, I mean, you know, do that's what it's cool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if we acquire a little bit more and try to, to get a 35 mile an hour curve in there, I mean, it's just the, Higher speed curve, the more right away you're going to need. 
is what it comes down to. Well, if you go at 25, they're going to exceed it. You know, our, our right. function is to provide the speed limit, whether right. or not they obey it. There. So, I mean, we could look at a, a 35 mile an hour and see what. But it all depends on who owns that farmland. Oh, they may be moving right there. Um, Trouble. Right. I lived there for five years. Sam Crest. Yeah. So I know what that curve thing is. Sure. Uh, and more and more more people use it to as a shortcut to go around and miss down on the highway to go back like one. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's exactly who owns it, but I think Red Lock's running it. Oh, I yeah. am. Well, I mean, up over here, yeah. And they got some down here at the end. You've got a willing uh, landowner to sell it, you might be sure. get it done in a relatively right. quick fashion. Yep. So okay. you'd be well, it's like they're farming them right away. So yeah. 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 Will you be putting that on the next agenda to purchase that? Well, that too fast? I think it will maybe a little bit too fast. <laughs> you know, government but, moves slow. So the longer oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> right. Well, if we got it yeah. purchased by yeah. spring, then we could get her done this summer. Right? That's all. Yeah. Uh, you you say, what yeah. You yeah. I will we'll see what I can do. Go out there and don't hire a firm that's going to lowball it. I mean, the crop prices are pretty high. So, right? Draw a chunk of money at them and you're done. Okay. Do you have a firm or do you guys pay to do it yourself? No, that we'd have to put that out. Yeah. You do, so, huh? Yeah, we don't do it internally, no. Oh. No. I don't think there's many. Out of gaming might still do it. Otherwise, I they might be the only ones that I know that do it in house. You're looking at at least what ten thousand an acre, maybe twenty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the yeah, and that's where they look at it. They do a radius, so many you know feet away, and uh, to determine that anything that's sold within a, the last year, that's where all those prices come from. So, yeah. Over ten general operations. Um, we did get that truck ninety nine that we had had that blown motor. Um, we uh, just got a call that is it's completed. Motor's back in. Um, we did get it back last week, and there was a couple little um, oh, some antifreeze leaks and just some minor uh, little repairs to do. Um. So we will uh, be having that, hopefully by the end of the week, that truck will be back here. So, um, and then we are uh, getting trucks ready for winter. Obviously we had this morning, we had uh, two trucks out uh, patrolling, one on the north, one on the south. Um, so obviously we're at that point where uh, starting to saddle all the trucks up. So trying to, complete some projects. Uh, it's got a quite a bit of paving to finish up here. Um, so hopefully we can uh, get some decent weather and we can get that paving finalized. Um, and how many paving or town? Um, same question. It's probably both. There might be a little, I know we were in the towns last couple of weeks. We were kind of back and forth. Um, I know we have, uh, uh, the parking lot over at Parkview for that new construction over there. Um, John Gold was going to go look at that this morning. They were supposed to have the curb and gutter done in there uh, so we can get in there and pave that parking lot. Um, last week we were up on uh, Pioneer and T. Uh, we got the uh, some scratching uh, done on the intersection right in Larson. Um, so this week, the plant is closed in Larson. They're doing some paving down Elkhart Lake racetrack. So that plant is designated only for that paving of that racetrack. Wow. So we can't get mixed. Um, oh, so yeah. 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 So, um, so hopefully that gets completed. And then, uh, obviously, we don't want to go haul from Cold Spring or Ripon, especially when you're right there. Um, and Northeast did have some crushing that was going on there. So hopefully their crushing was completed 
uh, so we don't have to worry about truck traffic from them. Uh, so yeah, we'd like to get uh, that. We're going to try to uh, finish grade on Pioneer uh, this week, um, and we'd like to get uh, bind, get that binder paved uh, right away. It's just under a mile, so uh, so we should be able to knock that out uh, pretty you know, open it out, pretty good. Or so. I, I hope the contract the contractor is going to have a lot of work to finish. Um, we're just we just want to get our portion done, um, and then the contractor is going to have to. Um, I know that I think the DNR is going to do their final check today. Um, so hopefully we get some good news from that. Obviously, we're to that point now where anything, any seed that gets put down uh, will germinate this year. Um, they would like to see, you know, I would like to see some germination of the vegetation in there. Um, so yeah, so that, and while that might change how we, they may require if we don't, if it doesn't germinate this, they may require uh, matting it. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit different than what they had proposed. Um, so, so yeah, um, we did have, uh, we did get, uh, uh, an employee's going to retire in December, first of December, uh, put in his time. Um, we, we got the resignation from the one from, that is going to be one of Fond du Lac County. Um, so we do, uh, we hired a uh, mechanic started, um, we have one more mechanic that we interviewed, uh, we're just waiting for the pre-employment screening to get done, we didn't get him on board. Um, we've got, uh, some applications we're going to go through to set up interviews, uh, so hopefully we can get that going here quick, um, to, you know, obviously to, uh, Get people in and get trained before winter is a tough, um, a tough task here. So soon we can get uh, some people in and get trained. And so, how so did we gain or lose since the last? So we're we lost one one more for the retirement. What is your employment status? And are you short of people? And if so, how many? Yeah, we're short. Um, I, as of this morning, I'll, I'll have to go through it and uh, take a final number again. Um, we did uh, we did have one truck driver start. Uh, I think we see last week. I, mean, so. I think it was last week. Uh, the mechanic and that uh, EO one started last week. Um, so uh, so we're plus or minus. We're back and forth. Um, we still have one one more that is on family medical leave. And I know he had some health issues, and I don't know the status. Could could go either way, so I'm kind of waiting to to hear with him. So, and we do introduce our guest. Yeah. So Hi. this is uh, Corey. <laughs> Corey uh, came from the sheriff's department. Is at the sheriff's department, and uh, when Lynn retired, uh, Corey was brought on. So yeah, she Hi, worked Corey, right. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. We're good. Welcome to a little more uh, somber setting. Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Corey's been a great addition to our staff, so working out very well. So, I have two questions. Number one, who is doing your interview now? How long does it take? That's kind of two questions. So, um, between. So I have the shop superintendent and I have the good mechanics. And then um, I have been, when I have time, jumping in. Um, but the superintendents have been looking at that. Um, we have moved where Ron used to come in with us. Um, we've been doing them all ourselves now. Um, once we, we were setting up the interviews, interviewing, and then um, and then I've been doing all the um, reference checks. Once reference checks are done, then I submit all that back to HR, and then they all do the background checks and then uh, the offer letters. So after you interview, how long does it take for HR? What are you um, that's what they ask? Kind of depends on. Uh, I, I mean, 
week, two weeks, I think, kind of is typical it's been. Um, I think we're losing many people in this two weeks. They say, well, I need a job, and I'm really interested, but it's going to go to me. Well, say they would take it. it's hard to say. I, I'm sure. I know earlier there was. Um, uh, a few months ago, uh, yeah, with work is uh, out of gaming was looking fine to lack what that everybody was looking for. Um, it basically came down to who you know got oh. first interviews and offers all. Well, back always made a joke to me at one of our East Central meetings how they were taking our employees. Yeah, well, we're the only thing is though, is I mean, they might be getting that, but I mean, they're getting a the trained employees. Trade them, we're not losing them out of the system. So, um, we should be grateful they're getting a trained employee that can walk right in. Um, that's that why it's a joke. Because we're training them for all of our money at Trump and they're getting yeah. Yeah. But they're getting a safe person out on the road too. It's got the experience. So, it's a <coughs> yeah, bad. Okay, so they're going good. there because they get more money. That's yeah. Well, I, I don't know why. Well, did you think like the one went? Well, tax up and he lives closer there or something. Yeah, that's what he told me. Is, yeah. yep. Yep. My other question, which was my original second question. Sure. How did we come out on that truck that, that burned up in the fire and that we all wait for insurance or whatever? So, uh, yeah, so that went to insurance. Um, I went in, you know, it's not a money moneymaker. Um, so, yeah, that people out just went, the insurance bought it and, or took it. So, so in other words, some township bought it there to require it, but whatever. That's a, I, not it's a, a safe one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, for that motor, I, I would imagine you'd have to pull that motor apart to the, the heat on there. I, I the seals, I'm not a mechanic, but I would sure think that is, you know, if you're going to put it out on the road, you might you'd have to stick a lot of money into it, but so. Oh, I had a thing. That's I'm just showing, I'm showing November 21st, if that works for everybody. It's your on. It is. Yeah. Well, it's your on. That's your on. Thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> Monday morning. I have a meeting, but it's later in the day. Number 28. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You worked at Park Plaza. Were you there when I asked 